What is happening people, I am BA, back once again with another reaction in the Wire series. This is episode 7 of season 3 now and it is called Backburners. Last episode. Like the main thing to me last episode which was escalating was this whole thing between Marlowe and Avon and then Cutty getting involved. They tried to attack Marlowe, Marlowe's spotters saw them, got ready with weapons, returned fire, killed two out of the three guys in the car and Cutty and the other dude who were in the alleyway couldn't even like begin to attack because they saw how fucked up their other team was. So they retreated. Avon was like, right, we need to start getting bodies. So in response to that, Cutty and the other guys start driving around and they spot Bucket Hat Dude that dickhead and I was so hoping that guy died but fucking at the worst possible point Cutty had a change of heart like have a change of heart in the car or have a change of heart after you kill him don't put your gun to his face and then have a change of heart because I guarantee Bucket Hat won't forget that he will uh, list you by name to Marlow and I mean this doesn't seem like it's gonna end well for Cutty now because Cutty went back to Avon and said yo this isn't for me Avon respected it but that now means that Cutty is a not in the game B not protected and C if those other guys if Bucket Hat or Marlowe's team see him he might be in some real real trouble so I'm rooting so hard for Cutty to get out of this shit and go and do his thing but the last time I did that D'Angelo got strangled in a library then the time after that I was rooting for the dude he got his throat cut so at this point I should maybe stop rooting for people if Cutty dies this will be my last rooting for anyone in the wild I will just watch it and have no fucking home team don't get me wrong I love that he told Avon he just didn't have it in himself anymore and, and, and he wanted to stop and then Avon tried to like push him down to drug deal and he was like alright you know what I kill but we can still put you on the corners and he was like no 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 I don't want to be in this world anymore bro and even then Avon still respected it and said he's a man he's a man for saying that and I love how Avon handled that and I just think in a perfect world you know he would now go leave get a good job graft maybe his old flame starts to see he's a changed man maybe they get together this is me writing my own version of the wild just now let me finish they get together they move somewhere nice in Hawaii they have a bunch of little cutties and lady school teachers they all become boxing champions Cutty becomes a barber he thought what can I do with this name other than stab people got it grows out his hair a little bit gets a little fro going puts a little comb in that shit Cutty cutting people's hair lady school teacher teaching away Little Cutty's boxing everyone. Tell me that's not a nice ending for those two. Not gonna happen though, is it? Also, I don't know if I mentioned this at the time, but like... When Carver and Herc were pulling up all these street gangs who were not dealing in Amsterdam still, everybody got bundled into vans except Marlowe's crew because Carver detected that they were ready to literally fight before they got arrested. It shows how deep Marlowe rolls loyalty-wise. I don't know how he has this, but Marlowe has like a fucking to the death loyalty from seemingly all his people and uh, that even had the police on the back foot which you don't really see on this show you haven't seen it with Avon, Stringer, anyone they haven't made the police backpedal like Marlowe just did that was like the most gangster shit ever so far in this show to see Marlowe just stand his ground and his boys like look at the secret weapon hiding spots like yo do, do you want us to go to war right now with these armed police because they would have done that's just crazy. But without further ado, and I've been looking forward to this shit all week because people say this is one of the best seasons, so from here on out, I expect this to get escalated. This is episode 7 of season 3, Backburners. Let's check it out and see what it's saying to it. Quiet today. Keeping it like that, boss. Rule where we stand. So Amsterdam must be working somewhat then. The corners are actually quiet. Boy Marlo closed up shop. Word is, he holds seven his packages from there. Oh shit, so Marlowe's res did respond in some way to all that shit then. Damn, I was just beginning to respect the little motherfucker for showing hard. So they assume Marlowe's backed off. Y'all step in there and take my corners. Morning, B. I swear Stringer mentioned this Amsterdam shit to Avon though. Avon's going into this situation completely blind as to what's happening. All his people are going to get scooped up. Open the truck. What about him? They can lock him up. Yeah? Yeah, Avon, what's his face? Big play from the projects. Avon, what's his face? Well, way to show your fucking police skills there, Hawk, in multiple ways in a single two word name. Maybe I got the years wrong. 
My point is, guys in there, so lock them up as well. <laughs> Anyone else in your squad that saw Avon would have said something with more merit than that. I remember him. Yeah, the guy's a fucking asshole. Yeah, well done. You don't remember the years. You don't remember his surname. All you remember is that one time you put him in cuffs and had him tried. How are you not going to remember the name of your primary fucking target? You absolute waste, man. I patiently wait, by the way, for Hawk to do something which could not be described as waste manish throughout this entire show. But from season one, he's been stepping on nails. He's just a habitual nail stepper. Rest in peace, Charlie Murphy. Bell, you recognize. Second target is a Marlowe Stanfield. He's apparently warring with Bell from West Side Corners. New primary targets all of a sudden. To be fair, they've just got a much better target than that can tell, dude. Like, Marlowe's a much more... Like, they might not know it yet, but Marlowe is way more high profile. Damn, this is fucked up! And all the assets work I did on Kintel. His cars, his cash flow. Just put that in a drawer. Obviously, it is kind of fuckeries. They had an investigation going on a single individual, and now they've been given two more targets. But, like, trust me, guys, you want this job more than just chasing that one random low-level dude. He is of no significance to the higher-up workings of anything. Hey, my man, I'm done mowing. So, I figure I use this to edge the weeds around the fence. Nice, that's cool he went back to the landscaping. I still think he's going to get spotted and killed. But I really hope he doesn't. Parole officers, employment agencies. Shit, I just felt like I was an interruption to their lunch break. You can feel like that when dealing with uh, public servants so often, I've found. What about one of them social worker types? I hooked up with one dude. He was cool, but I wasn't ready. Was that the guy at the church he walked away from? So maybe he'll start working at the church. Unless it's personal, like when Kima got shot. I don't care where we spend our time and money. Bell, Williamson, whoever, it's all just police work to me. Fair enough, he's just doing it. the job he gets put in front of him. You went to Colvin, by my back. I'd have gone to the devil himself. Which way you were standing, Lieutenant, had not a fucking thing to do with it. You piece of shit. Man, I'm starting to dislike McNulty more for these tactics. In the first two seasons, it was kind of cool, but now I can see why the rest of his unit get completely irritated by the way he's carrying himself. I mean, just do your fucking job, bro. When the cuffs go on Stringer, you need to find a new home. You're done in this unit. Don't blame him for taking that stance. Seriously, McNulty is the most self-serving dude in this unit. The only teamwork he knows is if people join his team to to his side of things he'll never join the group's side of things it's actually frustrating to watch and I don't even really like the police side of this shit but it's, uh, I just feel for a worker being shit and selfish and his co-workers having to bear the brunt we're down about 2% no where exactly are we down larcenies and burglaries are steady but shootings and ag assaults are both down I said this last episode he will actively reduce the crime rate with his idea everywhere else it's down in some places, as much as 4%. That is fucking dope. This might be what you call that, a statistical aberration. You ain't gonna let them know that your little experiment might be working? Not yet. No. That's so fucking dope that his experiment is working, though. Take those nine guys, go use them and double up on the high crime posts. If we handle less of it, we ought to do better with the crime we got. Fuck, what a forward thinking dude. There's nothing wrong with not doing the job that's put in front of you like Daniels does if you're that forward thinking. McNulty isn't being forward thinking, he's just selfishly pursuing his lone target that he has locked in his brain. Keep on with that shit and I'ma leave your ass in Baltimore. I don't trust no man on the road by himself, okay? I'm not stupid. But I don't think we've seen them before. No idea who that was. Where do you guys stand on this witness assistance thing? What? Overhauling the city's witness assistance program? <laughs> oh right, he's talking about the Gant thing again Which is funny because his guy was breaking uh, Burrell's balls on the stand Well not the court stand, but you know the police hearing thing And uh, he told him to shut up, but now he's got him by himself He's asking Mayor didn't say a word to me Thanks 
I'm trying to see Tommy in a slightly different light now because um, one of my Patreons was mentioning that he truly does want what's best for the city. I just see him as such a snake though. Like he sent his wife on away in a car and then banged some random woman at that party and he seems to be peddling multiple types of information to different people. But I'm trying to see the good in him because sometimes he does seem like he wants what's, the be- what's best for the city. If we had a burner that we knew was used by one of Stringer's players... We could use what we know about that organization to make all kinds of connections. That's going to be such an easy thing to do as well, because all you need to do is tell the low-level guys till they toss a burner, and then just collect it after they toss it. It'd be so easy to collect burners, even off of specific targets. I haven't figured out yet. We'll see that you do, detective. At least he was only joking for once. Lester was only laughing because he was actually only joking for once. Lester wouldn't have been surprised if he was being serious. Nigga, you ain't never heard of buying in bulk. You could be saving them people all kind of money, better still spending it on me. Who are these two and why are we following them? Is something bad about to happen to them or do they know other people in our story so far? <laughs> oh, they're buying bornals. Which one is he again? Baradis. Street name of Bodie. He used to be in the low rises. Had a tower later on. Yeah, Bodie's quite a good one to get as well because he has a, a burner link to Stringer's other non business phone. Let's hit the bar. Lester needs a phone, man. Nah, there's an easier way. I'll show you tomorrow. Come on. What is the easier way? He must have thought of a really good idea if he's ready to just go home mid-shift and just get pissed. Pissed is British for drunk, by the way. Not, like, pissed off. Brianna says she wants me to go downtown with her and, I don't know, hear the man out about Dean. I mean, Stringer has to watch what he says as well, because if he says too much of the wrong thing, she's going to know. About the detective. What you told me, you told her? It's her son, right? Man, she got a right to know what's going on. Even that's suspicious as fuck. Reacting like that. But Strange. Well, and she gonna believe that shit too. I mean, what mom's just not gonna believe her son didn't kill herself? Strange. How's she gonna take that shit? Go half crazy with it? Okay, now he's showing his guilt. I think she's gonna talk to a lawyer first, ask him how to play it. Oh, Levy? I guess whoever. The lawyer. Levy? I guess. Oh, you didn't ask that? What a fucking dick, man. She doesn't even look like she's thinking twice about how he reacted there. That was so suspicious, but obviously we know he did it, so maybe it wouldn't have looked as suspicious if we didn't know that. It's hard to tell after the fact. Self-righteous. Me? So what are you going to do now? <laughs> Call a reporter or two, rip the mayor, maybe on background, maybe go on the record, I don't know. I think his actor name's Aidan Gillen, is it? Uh, he's a great actor. He's taking on a two-term incumbent. It's all going to be ugly from here. Oh, they are scheming though. He is a schemer. I don't care if he's got good intentions, he's still a right sneaky cunt about it. I love how they've let this to just make it look like a fucking hellscape. A horror movie. Just to think like there's still an old lady living inside one of those um, apartments as well. This does look so bad because it's condensed, but I mean, what is really better or worse? To condense something or just spread it out? It's like if there's a COVID outbreak on a cruise ship, they don't let those people go back into society before they've tested negative. They contain the cruise ship. Containment is always a, a better scenario for something bad. She's got me all taking a scratch. I can't even hear what the fuck Johnny is saying right now. Soldiers panic. He's got overdose written all over him right now. Johnny needs to chill. You're a Viking. Get the fuck out of there, Bubbles. Jesus Christ. You two coming? The major said to bring them down. He didn't say shit about playing nursemaid to a bunch of goddamn animals. What do you prefer, Hawk? Just fucking smashing people's faces into walls, coughing them and then throwing them into a car, yeah? Is that where you get your job enjoyment? The physical manhandling side of it.
Oh, that's the smartest choice you ever made, Bubbles. That was a very symbolic moment, mate. I'm proud of you, bro. That was a very symbolic moment. You went away from the fucking dark doorway to to hell. Please get yourself straight, mate. I'm still low-key rooting for you as well, Bubbles. I would not have to work to unwind. Yeah, you look unwound. I figured you had everything under control on the home front. What the fuck is wrong with you? Wow, Kima's being a shit co-parent. I didn't do this by myself. We discussed it, all of it. We talked about it, yeah. They did discuss it. I didn't have as much to say about it as you. And why not? Because you you wanted this. Yeah, but you have to discuss things honestly as a couple, otherwise shit like this happens later, Kima. This is actually infuriating to hear from Kima, man. There's so many people that do shit without thinking through the consequences in life and then act like it's someone else's fault after the fact. She is a prime example of that in this situation. Fucking shame on you, Kima. You need to go. And now you woke the baby too. They're making Kima way more dislikable this season. She was somewhat likable the first two seasons. In moments, incredibly likable. This season, just because of the way she's handling her relationship and also the fact that she's picking up all the worst character traits from McNulty. None of the good shit, just all the bad shit. She's coming across as a right twat this season so far. It's like one of those nature shows. When you mess with the environment, some species get fucked out of their habitat. Did you just use the word habitat in a sentence? I did. Which is ironic, because you could legit just pick her up and dump him in a display at the zoo, and people wouldn't think it wasn't an animal. Say what? If you want to sling in Amsterdam after today, you and every other knucklehead, you each got to kick in a hundred a week. Oh, so you're trying to get paid, huh? This takes your corrupt bullshit to a new level, literally charging the dealers to operate on an already predetermined place they're allowed to operate. See y'all got some real ugly shit planned for me. I can see it. <laughs> that poor guy is only ever getting used for undercover work. He working you with guilt, boy. The fat man gave me an itch I can't scratch, but he, he wasn't really working him with guilt. Bunk was kind of talking passionately in that scene. I still feel like I owe something, Butch. What do you feel like you owe? I wonder what he feels like he owes and to who. I don't understand that statement. There's no harm done if she keeps her mouth shut and no. just listens. No, it's fucked up. There ain't no call messing with Brianna with this bullshit. What can you do? Does Levy know that Stringer had D'Angelo killed? I suppose Avon should know about it, though. Yeah, well, I'll handle that. Oh, man, I can't wait for Avon to hear that shit, because surely Avon will know it was Stringer. One of these people has got to clock it was fucking Stringer, especially the way he's coming across just now. He's seeming guilty as fuck. Car stop, maybe? Why not? Something to do at that point in the day, I suppose. The fuck's the freezer? I'm looking at it. I'm looking right over there. Ah, so none of them know about Amsterdam yet either. The rest of this, use it to pay them hoppers for the week. Whether you use them or not, you pay this money out. Shit is like unemployment insurance. So he was actually doing something cool with the money for once. He was just spending it on that basketball hoop. I like what Carver did there, that was cool. Unexpectedly cool of him. I can't believe this bullshit. Yeah, bullshit is right. I told you to shut the fuck up. Yo, man, you gave us your fucking word. You know you did. I mean, it'll be a lot easier if these guys just communicate with McNulty and that what's happening. Car? <laughs> oh, man. But you know what? When everyone finds out, all the major needs to do is go, yeah, but my murder rate's down 4%. What about you guys? I mean, that's craziness. Surely they're going to love him for what he's doing when they see the statistics. It's all about statistics to them. His superiors only give a fuck about the numbers and he is doing something significant with the one number that they are trying to reduce. This Mondo Mart's getting quite a lot of props this episode. Big up that Mondo Mart. How about we make one more stop, you get six of them shits, and I suck your dick for the next 20 minutes. At least he didn't say no to that offer. Jesus Christ, I thought this guy had no humanity in him. Deal. Fucking deal. Gotcha. 
Fuck you. I've actually never seen that prank done before. That <laughs> while it's quite fucked up, and he better reimburse him for the time money. You snooze, you lose. You know what I mean. And at least he didn't draw like a swastika on his forehead or something. <laughs> I've been to some fucking horrific house parties in my time. <laughs> District wide, my crime is down 5%. But do the bosses know? No, the bosses don't know shit about it. But this is just a district commander taking initiative on this one. I think McNulty sees the sense in this. Like, some of them must have to see the benefits of this when the crime is down 5%. It's a significant drop in a short time. So you had to see me get that run back to Jeep pack. That was ugly, I know. But I'm just trying to save what's up to my district any way I can. I've got a feeling that they are going to go and talk to Rawls about this. But then I've got a feeling that Rawls will like it because of the statistics. Just send a word, Jimmy. I mean, it's just back to usual. I'm out the door on the pension anyway. But Jimmy, I need more time. At least he's trying something to make a difference. Like, seriously, I hope McNulty sees that he's honestly trying to make a difference here. Oh, man, not he loves him now. Fucking best friends over here now. You witnessing? Or what? I'm afraid I'm blind. I would never th would have thought we'd have got to see these two speak. Glock 40, I believe. Oh, shit. Omar got him back the police gun. No fucking way. I suppose you ain't gonna tell me who brought this here, right? Like I said... I'm blind. I love the way he conducts himself. Butch, such a legend. Avon ain't here now. You got muscle. Don't worry about that, little man. He feels a bit more confident now. I hope Put doesn't get shot. I've warmed to Put this season. He's a little G. Speed dial. Presbyluski's face went incredibly serious there for a moment. Ain't no fix in it. It's fixed pretty good, I think. Thanks. I just do not like how Kima's handled this in general, and now it's obviously time apart it gives you good time, I think. I just hope that's just not her, like, distancing herself for good, just like, fuck this, fuck the baby, fuck this relationship. It's a really uh, selfish way to handle the whole thing. It's like... I'm standing outside myself, watching me do things I don't want to do, you know? This actor is so good to please cut him, mate. He is actually such a great actor. I'm surprised I don't recognise him from other things. Should I divert the money that's already been budgeted for snow removal from the first district this winter? Well, how about I reduce trash pickup to once a week, citywide? Budget is a fucked up thing, though. Like, the budget goes beyond the city. That's up to the actual government. Thanks for your time. Gentlemen. What will Tommy's response to that shit be though? He he might just get a big press conference and fucking absolutely burn the mayor for that shit. And this is all good ammo for if he does actually run for mayor to use against that guy. Well, didn't take long for that to get fucked up. Baltimore Police? Baltimore? Baltimore, Maryland. Where the fuck has McNulty found himself? I can get a Jameson. Bush Mills okay? That's Protestant whiskey. Price is right, ain't it? Make it neat. Did he just say that's Protestant whiskey? What a weird, prejudiced comment. Was he getting all that information just to go to this place where this fucking woman was going to be? That is ridiculous. I thought he was doing something to forward his case. 428? You live in this town. Oh well, at least she wasn't even asking him to hang about at a bowling event. Just like, yo, I need to be here for two hours. You go do your thing for two hours and then boom. Skip the bowling stuff, get to the good part. Taking care of the youngins. I like seeing that. Yeah, Marlo. He's real loyal. Can't think about that nest. Marlo's a pigeon guy. 
I learned a lot about pigeons just from watching Mike Tyson interviews. It's not really a thing in the UK having like a coop up on the top of the building, but I know it's quite a big thing in certain places in America. I always remember it in Ghost Dog. Don't know if you guys have seen that film, but Ghost Dog with Forrest Whitaker. It's a dope film. He's a pigeon guy and also a samurai. Now this user here, he serves as a clearinghouse. He receives calls and initiates interactions. He coordinates the show. This is some crazy cell phone tracing technology. I've never seen anything like this before. It's probably dated now, obviously, but... They're dumping phones every couple of weeks on average. By the time you get a wire up on that, the phones are dead. The whole network shuts down simultaneously. Yeah, how do you counter that? Seriously, when they're using throwaway phones, is wiretapping even a viable option? Damn, boy. It smells like sex. Take a fucking shower. Late for work. What a fucking gross observation there. One of the grosser observations I can remember in television. Jesus Christ, McNulty, take a shower. <laughs> that was a quick drive-by right there. I thought they just dropped to the ground. Fuck, they both- Oh, what? Poot's dead! Oh, thank fuck, he's not dead. Yeah, Marlow just rolls differently. This is... <laughs> Avon needs to actually fucking do something really lethal back to Marlow at this point, or people are going to die on his side. If I see him again... Stringer? No, the other guy. What other guy? Big boy, the one we locked up, um... Avon. Avon Barksdale? I cannot believe that he didn't even remember the last name. And on that note, I think our mayor would like to say a few words. Oh, it's a good look in the public for the mayor today. He's going to love this shit. And to thank you for your service in the defense of our city. Don't think Tommy's liking this shit because obviously the mayor's coming across so well. And he'll come across even better if um, these model statistics successfully do get kept below 300. Lieutenant, you got to see this. Holy shit, I can't believe none of them knew. Okay, and that was episode 7 of season 3 of The Wire, Backburners. And I will be back in just a minute with my thoughts on that. So, Backburners, what did I think of that? What a fucking great set of build-ups this episode had. I loved all the fucking shit that took place in this episode, even though most of it was still actually just build-up. Stringer was taking up such an active interest and fucking straight up getting angry about... Hearing the fact that Avon's sister, I forget her name, is going to go and listen to what McNulty has to say about D'Angelo's death. I mean, I cannot believe these people don't see that it was Stringer. Surely Levy is savvy enough to spot that, like, there's got to be something to do with Stringer here. Even Stringer's conversation with Levy made him look guilty, in my opinion. But yeah, is Stringer going to mention it to Avon? Because if Stringer mentions it to Avon, what will Avon deduce? Who else would want D'Angelo killed in there other than Stringer and if he doesn't tell Avon he runs the risk of D'Angelo's mum his sister telling him or Levy telling him so that puts Stringer in a weird uh, position where he might have to mention something and then to me all bets are off because Avon's smart enough to deduce that it was probably Stringer Avon understands that side of the game better than anybody except maybe Marlowe Speaking of which, so they cleared the corners and then that gave, um, you know, Bodie and, the, and Poot and them the opportunity to retake those corners from Marlow as he was laying low. And Marlow straight up instantly had that counter attack with a drive by on the motorcycle, killed one of the two muscle who were there to protect Poot. Thank God Poot didn't die. I thought he was dead for a minute, but no, he's cool. It might have sounded brutal, but I was right over the last few episodes where I said, like, you have to instantly nip this in the bud with annihilative tactics otherwise people will just continue to die as they take this soft line approach toward the situation Avon is demanding bodies and he's getting none He's lost most of his muscle and he's not recruiting any more. He should be taking some of that money off Stringer that Stringer's using for property development or whatever and hiring as much muscle as he can and going to war with Marlow. Otherwise, Marlow is just going to gain power and he's going to lose his, his grip. It also painted Amsterdam as an absolute hellscape at night. It was such a well-filmed film scene with all this smoke and confusion and just fiends walking about like fucking zombies and fights and it just looked like like a fucking rough place to be. 
That is the downside of containing crime to a quadrant, but the plus side is the t- statistics that it showed you. You know, they've literally reduced the murder rate by 5%. That's amazing. And you know, if you want drugs and that, that's where you go. You don't have to hang about there. It's just like fiends and dealers and shit hanging about there. So of course it's it's rough to be there. But you know, like I said, it's better than spreading it out everywhere. And yeah, I just had no idea that the team that put... Avon away wouldn't instantly be notified that Avon was now out. I can't believe they just found out there. I wonder if that's something that's going to make Daniels take a more active interest in chasing Avon and Stringer again as well because McNulty was like Stringer's the real target. Well he's actually not. Avon's out. Avon is once again the real target. So will that change their whole mindset as to who they want to follow or will they just continue following orders? I've just got a feeling right it might not end badly for the major who is in charge of Amsterdam because Rawls and Burrell and those guys are just all about the numbers and it's so important as well because they're getting grilled by Tommy and the councilman and shit just now to keep that murder rate below 300 that I think if he just puts the stats down on the table in front of Rawls and Burrell as furious as they are that he went behind their backs with that shit they will literally love the fuck out of him because all they care about is their numbers that's all I've seen so far is them giving a fuck about their numbers so no matter what he's doing if statistically it looks like that will they give a fuck I gotta say I don't know if they have different directors per episode as well but there was just certain shots in this episode which I've just thought like there's other shows where I really pay attention to the cinematography more and the wire I'm just more absorbed in the atmosphere and the character generally but I've got to say the cinematography in this episode and this series in general I feel has been great but yeah there was some really nice shots in this episode cinematography wise and of course we're following poor Cutty's fucking story that I swear is only gonna end with my man dying please tell me Cutty doesn't die because it's setting him up to be the dude who gets fucking spotted and shot that was the guy that had the gun at my head there he is there the one with the rake yeah kill him I just see it happening and it's some fucking bullshit so why are writers please be unpredictable and don't follow that story arc because I see it happening in my head and it's fucking horrific don't show me a dude turning his life around only to be shot in the back of his fucking head you cunts please don't do it you already strangled D'Angelo I'll never forgive you for strangling D'Angelo to begin with. Well, now you're going to shoot Cutty in the back of the head, yeah? That's how you roll, yeah? Okay. Okay. No, no. No, it's cool. David Simon. Yeah. By name. All joking aside, another great episode to Season 3 of The Wire. If you've enjoyed this reaction, click like. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this and ring the bell to be notified as to when they drop. If there's anything you want to talk about, just comment down below and share this video around to anybody you think might appreciate it or want to watch this series along with us. My Patreon link is down there in the description. If you become a patron, you get access to exclusive polls and posts. You get access to the reactions I put on YouTube a month and a half ahead of time. So you basically get a month and a half's worth of wire reactions. So I'm on episode 7 just now of season 3. I'm probably on like episode 6 just now of season 4 on Patreon. You also get full length versions of all these reactions. You just need to sync up your copy of The Wire with my full length reaction and boom, we're chilling, sitting, watching The Wire. So consider becoming a patron. It helps me and the channel out so much. And until next time, I have been BA. Peace.